Hi, my name's Richard Lappington, and I work for Finland's second oldest video company, Remedy Entertainment. Uh, the last game that we made was actually Quantum Break, and if you were at Slush Music yesterday, you might have seen our creative director, Sam Lake. He kind of slow jammed the musical history of Quantum Break. All right, Quantum Break took us about four years to develop. And uh, let's get straight to it. Let's see what Quantum Break is. superpowers, how time broke, a growing fracture in time leading to the end of time, how we traveled back to fix it and failed horribly, how it all went to shit. What do you want to know? So, obviously that had a lot of audio in it. And I'm actually here to talk about the sound and what actually makes up a, like a AAA game like Quantum Break. There are things like ambient sounds and gun sounds. And gun sounds, of course, you have bullet impacts. Actually, there's a hell of a lot of sound that goes into making a game like Quantum Break. Keep going and going and going. But these can generally be defined in the big three which is sound effects, dialogue, and music. One thing which this list doesn't actually mention is actually there's a hell of a lot more than just that this is what I'm actually talking about here is more like asset creation, but there's actually a lot more. Like In Quantum, we actually had a VFX-driven audio and a dynamic game mixing, which is all on the tech side as well. But anyway, I'm just going to talk about asset creation today. So let's start with sound effects. This is by far the most work that we do in the game. Sound effects makes up about 70% of the game. They all, all the three, like sound effects, music, and dialogue, and they all actually come together to serve a common goal. And the goal is to kind of express meaning in the game, like uh, emotion. So for instance, a sense of excitement, a sense of fear, or a sense of danger. So anyway. There is a certain type of sound effect that I'd like to talk about at the moment, and that's what I call the alpha sound, sound effect. And that's basically the very cool shit that we have in the game. Um, here's a quick clip, clip of alpha sound design. But actually, that's only part of the story. There's a lot of other sounds that go into the game as well, much subtler sounds. The movement sounds of the characters, the background, which kind of sell the scene in a way. You probably wouldn't notice them if they were missing, but the scene would feel wrong if they were missing. So here, next up, we actually have a, a cut from one of our cutscenes with just those sounds soloed. So you can actually hear what, how they add to the scene. Apart from there's so much noise that you've meetings with potential investors. One of the signature features of Quantum Break was actually the stutters. And these are moments when time breaks and frees and restarts and fits and stutters. This was a big challenge for us at the audio team. The way we had to create contrast in the game, 
we had a, we termed it kind of like the normal world and the stutter world, and these two worlds actually had to contrast to each other. And how we actually did this is we actually created basically two games worth of sound in parallel. So every ambience had a stutter ambience as well, and every gun sound had a stutter gun sound as well. I'm going to play you a clip now, which is actually two videos side by side. Concentrate on the one which is in color, and see how it contrasts the one which, which well, see how it contrasts. Now I'm here, Chief. Mister that safety whistle. They're taking everybody, every witness to what they've done. Sound effects, like I said, were the biggest under undertaking, and we actually created about twenty-five thousand assets. Or actually, there's 25,000 assets on disk when you buy the game. But during Quantum Break, we actually actually made something closer to 200,000 individual assets during the development of the project, which is a huge undertaking. Okay, dialogue. I haven't actually got, ironically, much to say about dialogue. It tells a story, of course. But as we were just talking about numbers. We actually had 11,306 lines of dialogue in the game, which is a fair amount. Just to give you an idea of how much this actually is, if you take all of Remedy's previous games and add them together, Max Payne, Max Payne 2, and Alan Wake, it comes to about 5,161 lines of dialogue in total. But anyway, this 11,306, how many lines actually is that? In the game, we had 18 levels. Average dialogue length was about 20 minutes back to back. Plus, we had a feature film's length of cinematics. So you can, this can be compared to something. Let's say it's about 18 episodes of The Simpsons and the, and the movie combined, which is a fair amount. But in a way, dialogue can be more than just words. In Quantum Break, we wanted to use dialogue in a different way. Jack, our main protagonist, can actually, he could manipulate time. So we wanted to use dialogue in a way that would demonstrate this manipulation in time. Humans are very tuned to listening to dialogue. So when you start manipulating dialogue, or manipulating the voice, it's, we are very susceptible to actually hearing that change. So it's a very, very good way of actually communicating things like time, time changing. Anyway, I've got a clip now of actually the dialogue solos which are in a combat sequence in Quantum Break. Listen how the, how the words are actually just changed and stretched depending on the time spec of the game. Don't lie up! Shit! No! Some kind of shield! Hey! Whoa! I'm empty! Ew! So music, well, music's an interesting thing. Games are interactive, unlike movies. So we have to develop lots of systems, and lots of games develop music systems. We have um, like systems for knowing when the combat starts. We have a particular piece of music for when the combat starts. And we have a system for knowing when the combat ends, and we have a music for that. We have bits of music for kill stingers for when people, you know, when you shoot enemies and they die. And we have a way for, like, tracking combat intensity during the game. But we want to kind of go beyond that. Beyond this just basic music system, we wanted to make the gameplay much more kind of connected to the music system. Like I was saying earlier, Jack has time powers. He can actually manipulate time on the fly, in, or the player can actually change the time scale of the game on a press of a button. And we wanted the music to actually react to this button pressing, just, just like that, and the music would change. It's quite a unique thing to do. So yeah, I could say, for instance, that music is usually a reflection of the action. And we wanted the music to actually be a literal interpretation of the action. 
this actually had quite an impact on our composers. They needed to basically compose music that would be instantaneously be able to be broken. And so the melodies would ha couldn't really resolve, or the rhythms couldn't really resolve, to so actually allow us to be able to break the music whenever we wanted to do. Anyway, the last clip, the following clip, is an example of how the music works in our game. Listen to each of how it actually manipulates and see how with, with the visuals it's actually changing in real time. Okay, and that's it for me. Thank you for listening.